go over this two setups. We only have two setups in the room. We have a momentum and a retracement setup. Here was our retracement setup where it caught the wrong position traders. I'll go over how you want to enter the trade there with your stops retracement trade. We just had a trade that fired right here, which is called our momentum trade. Just fired with our fib arrows. This is our momentum trade. I'll call it a mom I call it a momo trade. So only two setups on every single market that you trade: all futures, all stocks, forex currency. It works on every single market the same way. So here's our trend chart. We know if we're in a downtrend, or if we are cross down, our smaller MA is cross below our intermediate. We're in a downtrend, especially when we are what? We are. I got a longer term MA, intermediate, smaller MA. If they're all going uh, or below each other, you know you're in a hard downtrend. So right when the first green bar prints, we had rolling position traders come in. These are retracement trades that popped up also. Let me show you. You can catch this high. It caught the counter trend traders here this morning. We've been in a downtrend since midnight. Caught that high. And it caught that high. Why? A retracement trade requires an opposite color candle to come in. That tells you you got counter trend traders coming in the market. Counter trend traders are typically always wrong. And we want to go against the counter trend traders. When they're buying, we want to be selling. When they're selling, we want to be buying. So what we want to do, how can you catch wrongly position traders, is that moving averages we use for trend direction, not support and resistance, and not for crossovers, but we use it for trend direction. You can see we're in a hard downtrend in the market this morning. The first after midnight, we had a green bar printed here. It caught the high here. I'll show you how we did it, uh, how the market works, uh, system works. A green candle closed here. Counter trend traders came in, caught this high. And then counter trend traders came in here, and it caught this high. So that's retracement trading. The last trade is momentum trading. Momentum trading is when you have all red bars and the market is just will not print a green bar if that happens let me bring over my far right chart Fibonacci chart if that happens you want to look for a fib arrow which is fired right here to fire when the market retest intra bar these averages right here so if it retests these averages intra bar you look for a momentum trade that's called a momo trade okay so if an arrow fires here or here, if it's retesting the bar, either one of these guys, you want to enter the market if it retests that small may, if you're all red on the way down. So that's the difference between a, mom a momentum trade and a retracement trade. A retracement trade, you get opposite color candles come in. That's telling you look for a deeper retracement. Once it comes up for a deeper retracement, we can – uh, pour itself in with resistance on market profile or our symmetrical or symmetry dots, which I have tons of videos on you can play. But this video is more about stops. So play our last couple of videos on a retracement trade, momentum trade. And um, I got several videos how to trade both of them, play those. This video is about stops. So how do we get in to these? I mean, once we get in these positions, these three retracement trades or this momentum trade, how do we play stops? That's the key. Now, momentum trades, remember, well, before I go on, you can extend that out, and that's going to tell you if you're touching intra bar. If you're touching intra bar, whoops, well, what I like to do, extend it out at the same degree. There you go. If you're touching intra bar on a retracement, you can eye judge it or just let it see if it touches. That's the way I like to do it. But um, let's go over stop. So, our last trade set up, let's take a look at, was right here. It Momentum trade, it touched intra bar on the MAs, and we got a Fibonacci arrow that fired here. Right there at just before 810. So how do we play stops? Let me show you a way to play small stops. This is where we retraced up. All right, a Fib arrow fired on this bar, exactly on this bar right here. Here's where the Fib arrow fired up here on this bar, fired right at this high, this bar. Fib arrow fired here, 
That's what was touching the trend chart and momentum trade. It fired right there. This is our pulling candle. Now, let me show you how you can get real small stops on trading this system. I was showing a long-term trader this yesterday, and it works really, really well. So we know if we get a body candle close below, partial body candle close, that's your entry bar for confirmation. I got that small MA for that. Instead of having your stop two ticks above the swing high, what you can do is you can put it right at this swing high, the high of the bar. Now, some of you, if you want to get a little bit wider, you can go two ticks above the swing high. If you want, all the top trades will never break the swing high unless you M top or W bottom. For example, yesterday we had a W bottom that happened and it took out the low after pulling you in and stopped you out before the first target, then the second one hit and it took off like crazy. If you got your stop two ticks above the swing high, you're going to have larger stops. So you can't take a reshot at an end top or W bottom. Having a stop like this allows you to get small stops on every single trade. And so if you do get end topped or W bottom, it allows you to reenter the trade with a small stop. Now some traders like to do, we got a lot of traders like one tick above this swing, which is fine. But I put one tick above the swing is what I do. I like to put one tick above the swing. So what I've been doing lately, I normally keep my stop two ticks above the swing high on all trades. That's how I've always done it. What I'm finding with the system like this is I'm lowering my stop tremendously by putting it one tick above the swing high on the pull-in bar. And it's allowing me to have a five to six tick advantage on a stop. And that allows me almost to get it two trades to one trade. In other words, I have an advantage of having two trades instead of just one stop. I get a two for one on entering the market. The market should never break this pull-in bar high. So by placing it at the swing high or one tick above the swing, you will get stopped out on end tops and W bottoms. But you can still get stopped out at end tops and W bottoms as it was proven yesterday on this swing high. So what it does, if the market end tops or W bottoms sets a higher, higher high on shorts or lower low on buys, it allows you in the market to re-enter and still have the same stop as an original first stop. So you get two for one. So it's a really neat way to do it if you guys want to start following this um, because it's so accurate, the system's so accurate. When you get a momentum trade or a retracement trade doing this, when it comes up, especially on symmetry dots, you come up on sim dots and it's a retracement trade and you get pulled in like this, your stop right there at the swing or not like one tick above the swing, it really lowers your stop. So this is your entry. Your entry is a partial candle close. Here we go. So let's say you were buying. Let's just say you were buying down here, and this is support. Let me show you how stop would work down here. That would be your entry bar right there because you see the partial candle close above the small MA. So your stop would be placed not two ticks below the swing low, but right at the swing low of the pull-in bar or one tick below. I've been doing one tick below, and it's working really, really well. All right, you can even go, I got traders that email me all the time that's been doing it at the swing low. So it's not a buy, obviously, we're in a downtrend, but my point is that was our last sell right here, and that's how you can lower stops. That's how you can do your stop placement, okay? On gold, like gold just happened. Let me show you gold real quick. Here's our gold trade that just happened. It came up, rolling position traders got caught. So if I'm a gold trader, it just caught this beautiful sell. So right now we're in an uptrend, right, on gold. And it caught the rolling position traders. Let me show you. It caught the rolling position traders. So here's your, here's your candle that closes below. So there's your candle that closes below, partial candle close. So that is your, once it closes, this is your open. You open the candle on this bar. Your stop placement can be one tick above the swing. or right at the swing high. Look how it never broke. All the top trades on wrongly positioned traders getting caught or momentum trades, they should work. 
The only time you're really going to get stopped out on a trade like this is if the trade is totally wrong at the wrong spot, wrong area, which will be a small stop anyway, or it's trying to end top or W bottom. But if it end tops or W bottom, you can still re-enter the trade because you got a, such a small stop and the market should go in your direction. So instead of placing your stop now, two ticks above the swing high, up here, look how much you lowered your stop. Look at the difference in stop. I'm at 40 and I'm all the way down here at 70. Right? That's a seven tick stop difference. And it averages around, like I said, five, six, seven tick stop difference. That's huge. Because what you can do now is you can literally go in with the trade set up and try to get a five, six, seven dollar trade with the initial eight. Right? Eight to ten by doing a stop placement like this if you're doing a stop placement. So it's one way to lower your stop if you guys want to do that. I just want to show you that technique because a lot of traders have been using this, it, working out really well. But that's gold. We just had a nice successful gold trade on that. It's only a partial candle close below. That's what you need, a partial candle close below. You're good to go. Okay? So that's how we can do stop placement. Like I said, if this was a buy signal right here, then your stop would be one tick below the swing low. See how it's closing above the candle. We're still in a, a slight bias up right now as far as the momentum chart, I mean the uh, market delta chart goes. Okay? Everybody see that? Now, here's the other thing on this trade setup. Notice how this Fib arrow fired right here. Notice how the Fib arrow fired. Notice how we didn't get pulled in. See this? Look how it never got pulled into the market. See how it never closed? That's how that confirmation tool works right there. Look how it never closed below it. This Fib arrow, get this out of here. See the difference? This Fib arrow confirmed. This Fib arrow did not. This one even confirmed with a pull in. Just got under 10 ticks on this one. And there's your big one. And then see how this it got Fib arrow but never confirmed on the pull in. That's how this pull in helps you out. It helps you out by doing that. So that's how you do stop placement, guys and gals.